What was life like for you before surgery versus now? Life was hard, I'll say. Uh, I would get sick all the time. I always had a cold. And whenever I had a cold, it's hard for me to get rid of it. I think the longest I ever had a cold for was like a month and a half because if I had mucus in my chest, my lungs, they told me when I had to go to a doctor, you know, at one point um, in college, my lungs weren't really expanding like they're supposed to. They were just going, to, they would just go out and go back, right back in. They weren't like expanding and then going back in. So they weren't expanding like they were supposed to and it was hard for me to get that out of my chest, which meant I was gonna be sick for longer. Even drinking like hot tea and stuff just didn't, it just, it was just like hard. Like I had rocks in my chest basically, from what I was told. So it was hard to get rid of that. Um, eventually, of course, you do get rid of it. But once I got over a cold, I got another one. So I also learned, you know, doing research on scoliosis because, I mean, you have to know your body, what's going on with it. I don't like surprises. I like to know what's going to happen, what's, gonna, what's going on. And then when something wasn't right, I was just like, oh, I have this. I, I already knew. I didn't have. I didn't need a doctor to tell me. I knew what was going on. So, um, like, the digestive issues started. I ended up with like what I feel like it was some type of. I know scoliosis can also cause it. Some type of weird acid reflux issue. Um, it's usually mostly around my cycle every month. Um, other than that, I don't really think it was an issue other than when, um, I started getting hiccups all the time. And I think the longest I ever had those was a couple weeks, like nonstop, drinking water, did nothing. It, they were extremely painful. My chest was like swollen and sore. It was bad. We tried everything to get rid of them, couldn't get rid of them. And when I was to the doctor, they were just like, eh, not really much you can do about it. <sighs> So, yeah, I had to deal with that. I don't get them as often as I used to get them anymore, and they're not painful when I have them anymore, so that's a good thing. Um, but yeah, so there's that. There was, um, I don't know. I started, my anxiety got worse during all that. Uh, sleeping a lot more. Um, I was irritable and sensitive and um, you know, not as energetic as I would have been at like nine or ten years old, you know. So, because I was diagnosed at 13. Um, let's see, what else? The back brace issue, I hated wearing that thing. Um, you guys want me to talk about what life was like for me having to wear it to school every day. Uh, I will talk about that in a different video in more detail because there's a lot that went on with that. A lot of things were hard. A lot of people didn't understand what was going on with me. They were just like, you have to do this, you need to do this, you need to be, you know, more energetic, able to do this. But my body was deteriorating. So there wasn't a whole lot I could do, you know? I was always in some kind of pain, always feeling sick. Um, just not doing good at all. And the one thing that kept me going, I would say, was like anime and like cosplaying, which I started cosplaying when I was around 17 or 18 before I went to college. Um, mostly as just a way to like with my own spirits, I guess. And it just kind of stuck with me. And I absolutely love doing it. Like you guys that, that have been with me for a while, know that I occasionally post like, cosplay videos and, you know, cosplay makeup videos and stuff like that, so I still love doing that stuff. I have some makeup videos coming out soon, so. But, um, yeah, life was difficult. Um, we didn't know what was going to happen. It got really difficult when I was in college. Um, maybe like a year, no, was it two years? Might have been two years before, um, I had the surgery, because I had to meet with my surgeon in 2017. So, maybe 2016, 
come into the doctor and like they basically told me there wasn't anything else they could do and I was gonna die um, if I didn't get the surgery and we didn't have enough money to pay for it. So I kind of knew what that meant. I was going to die. And I just started dating my boyfriend, who's now as a uh, you guys know my fiance, and I was just like, how do I tell him? Like, you know, this my this is my first boyfriend. Like just started dating him what the heck there was a lot of things and then now like a lot of stuff is better a lot of stuff is still the same but better like I still I'm still tired a lot I'm tired right now you guys can probably tell by my face and my voice um, I'm still tired a lot I still have pain but it's not so constant where it's like every single day unless it's raining or snowing outside Outside of that, I get sore from dancing or whatever, but it's not like, you know, where it's like, oh my god, it's cruciating all the time. It'll be like minor. I'm like, I can deal with this. And if it gets too bad, I have meds for that. Um, but, yeah, and there's, I mean, there's also different teas and stuff you can drink and just like that. If And then whenever I have any type of back pain or tightness. I get tightness pain now from the metal being back there in my spine. Um, my stomach is right across from my back, so it pinches this nerve. Um, it's one nerve, and it makes me nauseous, so I have medicine for that too. Um, and if I get acid, because sometimes I'll still get acid in my throat or my mouth, or you know, sometimes it's not just acid. I also have um, natural stuff for that. I like the natural stuff better. Because I don't like taking a whole lot of pills because I have chemicals and all that stuff. So then you can't take too many of anything. But um, I like natural stuff too. Because I feel like sometimes it does a better job than, you know, a pill. Or it does the same job. Um, it's just not as harmful to your body, I feel like. So... Yeah, um, yeah, right now I'm in a lot of pain because it's, you know, winter and it's cold and it's snowing and stuff, but other than that, when it's not raining, when it's not snowing, when the pressure in the air is, like, normal and the weather is, you know, consistent, I'm usually fine. I don't have any pain at all. I can go out and do whatever I want to do and be fine. So, I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that I'm still here. Another thing that's changed too, again, is the fact that I'm not, it's not like, oh my gosh, you're, you know, knocking at death's door. Like, having the surgery in general gave me another chance to be here and to do what I love to do and to keep shooting for my dreams. So, um, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that that has greatly improved. Like, I'm just grateful for that. I'm um, grateful that I get to be with people I love. Great, grateful that I get to talk to you guys as much as I can, when I can. Um, yeah. That's another thing. That's another big thing that's changed, of course. So, okay. Another question I could ask is: Should I be scared? Now I'm gonna say two things. First thing is. I can't really tell you if you should be scared or not. But the second thing I can tell you is that the uh it's it's scary. I'm not gonna lie and say that I wasn't afraid to get the surgery because I was. I didn't know what was gonna happen. I didn't know if I'd be paralyzed, I didn't know if stuff would be better or worse, I didn't know if the metal malfunction. I didn't know anything, you know. So my doctor assured me that I should be fine, but at the same time, I'm just like, what if, what if I'm not? Because I'm that type of person. Um, I'm always thinking ahead, like, what if I'm not? What if this happens? What if that happens? What, what will I do? Like, what, what's gonna, how's that gonna affect the other parts of my life that I care about, you know? Like, I think about those things. And I think that also freaks you out. So, I will say, ask as many questions as you can research things because it makes it less scary if you know what you're getting yourself into it makes it less scary 
trust me. I was absolutely terrified. I didn't even sleep the night before the surgery. That's another problem. It's absolutely drained. Like after, like it was just bad. Also forgot to mention I had to learn how to walk again uh, with the metal back there because my spine had been broken, obviously, like I told you guys in, pre in one of the previous clips. So, you know, you have to learn how to walk again. That's scary. I already kind of knew that. I have watched people's videos on, you know, them documenting their surgery experience and stuff. So that also kind of prepared me for what was going to happen, you know. Um, but, yeah, everybody, I think everybody's experience with surgery is the same but different. Um, but again, my mom used to always tell me when I was younger, and she still tells me to this day, you know, if you learn as much as you can about something, and you ask as many questions about it as you can, it takes the, you know, fear out of it. Maybe not completely. But at least it alleviates the weight it puts on you, you know? Um, I would also say if you're scared leading up to surgery, like going out with friends or you know, spending time with your SO or your family, you know, doing fun stuff is comforting too. That's what I tried to do for myself before the surgery. I was, I was nervous, you know, understandably nervous. Um, but doing that also kind of helped me to like, you know, be like, okay, I can do this. We got this. I have this play where everybody around me. Let's go. So that's also another thing that you guys can consider. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't say, I don't know. I would say, I don't know. I would say it's a scary thing. But, you know, just educate yourself and have fun before, you know, the surgery. Especially since you won't be able to have fun for, like, a couple weeks after. <laughs> so, I mean, it takes nine months to fully recover from the surgery, so. But, I was, like, after the first four weeks, I was able to, like, go out with my friends. And, uh, I wasn't able to, you know, dance or anything like that, but I could still, like, play video games or go to my friends' houses to hang out or... You know, go to the park, go downtown, stuff like that. So, how does it affect mobility? It affects mobility so much. So, uh, as a dancer, there's a lot of things that, like, the dance community, the dance world expects you to be able to do. I can't do a lot of those things. I can do other things that are still pretty cool. But the other stuff that other dancers can do, I can't do. Like, I can't do gymnastics or acrobatic tricks. I wasn't good at them before the surgery anyways. So. <laughs> but I can't do gymnastics or acrobatic tricks. I can't do back bends or back flips or, uh, you know, stuff like that. I used to be able to bend down and touch my toes. Can't do that anymore. I get, like, almost kind of there but not really because my back doesn't bend that way anymore like my lower back does not really bend anymore i can still bend the top half of me because that's not fused like if i wanted to leave my head back you know push my shoulders back and stuff i can do that can't do that otherwise um uh let's see what else can what else can't i do um, as far as dancing is concerned, I can't floss. I look weird. My hips, because they're in the part of where my, they're in the, you know, area where my spine was fused, I don't, they don't really move. Like, if you guys see me doing my hip hop moves and I have to use my, you know, use my hips and go like that or kind of like this, you know? Uh, my hips don't move. I move my legs. You guys can probably tell that, but I move my legs. I can't move my hips. So if I floss, my Isaiah makes fun of me all the time because I have to go like this real slow. I can't do a real floss. I look weird as crap. So, um, 
that's not going to change. My hips don't really move like they used to. I gotta use my legs and kind of, you know, use them with my hips a little bit because my hips don't move a lot by themselves. Um, I can't get my legs as high as I used to. Um, I can almost get my foot if I whacked it up to my ear. Not anymore. My leg goes maybe out of here. I mean, you guys can you guys watch my videos. You can tell that, but my leg right here. Well, maybe like down here, you know. I can still get up there. I, I stretch every day or try to stretch every day. I'm inflamed, so I don't stretch. If I'm just achy, then I do stretch. But if everything's like swollen and inflamed, I can't stretch because you sh you're stretching just for it to pop. And then it just makes it worse. So I don't stretch when I'm, you know, when my arthritis is really flared up. Because I can't. It just makes... It just makes that worse and it makes it more painful, so I can't do that. Um, but yeah, I can't do that. I probably will never be able to do like a leg hold turn or anything like that because I can't. I can't get my leg up here, especially not my left leg. My left leg, my left side is the side I can most work to because that's where the curve was. So I can't. I turn my right foot. My left leg is what is what I would use to do Alice cone turns or leg holds or whatever. Can't do that. So, um, I've been trying to get my Alice Cone turns for the last, like, two or three years. I kind of have it, but my leg, my body kind of does it when it wants to. Um, I can't really hold my leg up because, again, my hips are kind of locked down. So, especially my left one. So, I can't really, you know, use my hip, put my hip down and hold my leg out long enough for me to turn around and do all the pretty Alice Cone turns. My leg, after, after like, partly through the turn, I was like, I'm just going to drop. And it just kind of, I can't lift it up anymore. So that's another thing that's difficult. Um, personal ability, I, I run a little bit funny now. I can run now, which is great. It's another thing that's changed that I just thought about since surgery. I wasn't allowed to run before because of my heart and my lungs. Uh, I can run. So I run a little goofy. <laughs> Uh, because I, you know, I can't really move my legs the same way because again, everything in my, where my lower back is and below that is what's the most affected. I feel like, you know, because of the surgery. So outside of my heart and my lungs, you know, up here, but yeah. So yeah, that's, that's different. Um, yeah. So, um, that's another thing that's like, you know, up there. Um, what else can't I do? I can't roll around my back like most dancers, you know, do for like temporary lyrical or stuff like that. I can't do that. I can't flip over myself. Um, I walk a little weirder now than I did. Um, but yeah, so that's. So about all that's changed mobility wise. I just don't bend the same way anymore, mostly. Um, and, you know, there's still things I need help with, like reaching something, you know, or lifting, lifting things especially. I can't lift a whole lot of things, you know, that are super heavy. Like, I have to have somebody help me with that, whether it's my mom, my brother, whoever. Um, lifting things. Um, I can't reach my back. I never really could. It's just worse now. So I had to get a back brush so that I could wash my back myself. Um, sometimes I need help putting lotion back there. Um, my arthritis cream. Because I have arthritis, arthritis cream. It really works. Uh, I will probably link it for you guys down below. For those of you guys that have arthritis. Um, even just back pain in general, it, it really does help. So... I'll link that down below for those of you guys that, you know, might want to try it. Um, it was like 30 bucks, but it works. Like, I'm a firm believer in paying for what works. Even if it's expensive, if, it, if it's expensive and it's going to work, I feel like it's worth it, you know? So, um, yeah, so as far as mobility, that's about all that's changed, you know? Um, after surgery, of course, I could put my arms over my head. I can do that now. I can do this. I can't throw. 
as far as or as hard as most people can because when you throw you're throwing with your back you know your arm up into your back so i can't throw as hard as i used to be able to um like when i or I i'm playing a basketball game i can't i can't play for super long because it starts to hurt my back i mean as i went axe throwing um the axes weren't heavy they were little so they weren't really heavy but you know throwing them um it takes a lot of force to get it to stick so i had to like bend my knees and then reach up and throw but i even after doing that a couple times it started to hurt my back so we only had a couple minutes left before we ever leave our the uh, axe throwing place that day but i was like my back is done <laughs> so yeah that's about pretty much all that's changed as far as mobility um, oh, I can't lay on my left side, or if I want to do like a lay down, whack my right leg, can't do that. I can whack, I can lay down on my right side and whack my left leg, but I was told never ever lay on your left side because if you do that, especially over time, you can malfunction the pins on and the rod on that side. I don't want to do that, so I don't lay on my left side anymore. If I have to lay on my side, I lay on my right side, lay on my back, lay on my stomach. That's about it. Okay, next question. What things can you do now that you couldn't do before? I can run. I'm not allowed to jump or leap, which sucks because those are my favorite things to do in dance. And I can't do them. <laughs> so, I can run. I can play sports as long as they're not contact sports. Um, I love baseball. I love volleyball. I love, um, I love soccer. I love sports, you know? I prefer to play than to watch. I, can, I know how to throw a football like nobody's business. My brother taught me. He's the best. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I love sports. I love playing sports. I, I love that I can play sports now. Maybe not professionally, per se, but I can still enjoy them with my friends. And it's great. So I can do that now. I can do a lot more tricks now and stuff that I couldn't do before. I even learn that I can do some more stuff that, you know, I didn't you know, like physically do, so it's pretty cool. Or even tricks that I thought I wasn't going to be, be able to do after surgery that I can do and I can do them better now because I had the surgery. That's pretty cool. Um, what else can I do? Um, I don't know. Oh, I know what I can do. I can actually finish growing now because... Um, before the surgery, I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys or not, but before the surgery, um, when I started turning 13, or right before I was diagnosed, we noticed that I was getting shorter. And after I was diagnosed with scoliosis, that might, it made sense, you know, that that's what was causing it. And I wasn't really able to grow. Like, I would grow, then I would shrink. And I would grow, and I would shrink. And it just kept going on for years and years and years. So... After the surgery, they're like, yeah, you can finally grow. You can get taller. Like, you'll be great. And I'm sprouting. <laughs> um, I've had to buy new pants at least three or four times within the last couple of years because one minute I can fit them, the next minute I'm too tall to wear them. And I'm too tight on my thighs. So I end up having to, they end up being capris, but they're too tight capris. So I've had to go buy pants a couple of different times. I actually had to go buy pants again because I grew again. Like, I'm just sprouting you guys. It's great. <laughs> um, I can grow. You know, finish growing now. I think I have three more years before I stop growing. Um, but I'm just sprouting, guys. It's great. I can take... Uh, I can run without getting winded. I can take longer walks. You know. I can walk around downtown all day or walk around the museum all day without getting tired, without being in pain. I might cry, like, that's great. Um, I went on my first museum trip, I want to say a year or maybe two years after my surgery with my friends, Kalia and Camry. As they had the worst, they couldn't go with us, so it was just three of us, and was, we had the best time ever. Um, and they, you know, had stopped, We they stopped us, and well, I think Camry stopped us, and I'm like, what's going on? And he's like, I just noticed something. I'm like, what? He's like, you walked around this whole museum for the last, like, two hours. 
But that time I stopped and take a break. They kept asking me, like, do I need to take a break? Do I need to rest or anything? I was like, no, I'm good. I was perfectly fine. I could have walked, like, all night if I wanted to. It was, it was great. And Karen was like, I'm so proud of you and where you've come. And Clea, uh, how far you've come? And Clea said the same thing. I was like, oh, thank you guys. <laughs> so that was pretty fun. I love, I love walking around downtown. I love going to museums and, you know, exhibits and stuff. And being able to be there for a long period of time without having to sit down every five seconds is great. Um, what else? Um, I don't know. I, there's just so many different things that I can, like, do. Like, I wouldn't even get wind of going to stores, you know, but it's fine now. Uh, so there's a lot more, you know, I can go out with my friends, um, a lot more than I used to be able to. We can go on trips, long car rides are still not my friend, but getting my body used to that again is going to take some time, so, um, other than that, I'm fine, um, and, I don't know, there's, there's not really that much more that I can do that I, you know, couldn't do before, but the stuff that I can do that I really couldn't do before is huge for me. So, I'm happy. Would you ever consider getting your metal taken out? I have thought about it. I've been asked this question several times. I have thought about it. There's a lot of risk associated with that. Main thing being, the same thing as it apply when you have the initial surgery, apply to the taking out surgery. So, it's still the same nine month recovery, blood loss, catheter, not being able to, having to learn how to walk again, uh, you know, breathing tubes in your nose so you can breathe after surgery, ICU, staying in the hospital for a week, um, And, um, potential for, like, paralyzation and, you know, infection, things like that. All that stuff applies to taking it out. Not to mention, you can also cause nerve damage taking it out. Um, but there are people that get theirs, you know, taken out after nine months, because you can. But in my case, since it's pretty, since it was super severe after a certain point, now it just, you know, a little bit severe, pretty severe. It became very severe at a certain point. And um, they're like, I, I feel like you should leave them in, but if you ever decide that you want them taken out, that can be arranged. So I thought about it, especially since I want to be able to do like a lot of other stuff that other dancers can do. But at the same time, I would also risk my scoliosis coming, like not coming back because I never left. It's just, you know. Kind of like I'm in remission. Um, so I risk it progressing again. And if it gets to the point to where I have to get surgery again, that's another that's three surgeries on my spine. I don't want I don't want that. So, you know, it's not is it worth taking out? For me, Probably not unless I absolutely have to take it out, like if something malfunctions or, you know, anything like that. But other than that, I don't really have a real reason to take it out. What if you ask that your scoliosis could start to progress again? And what would you do if that happened? I have considered this so many times since surgery. Um, I've been asked this question, just like a lot of these other questions. So many times. So, for the eyes that could come back, well, not come back, or start progressing again, I should say. The eyes that could start progressing again um, are pretty 50 50. It could, it could not. I don't know. It could do it at any time. The older I get, the more I have to worry about that, though. But for now, we're going to cross the bridge when we get to it. That's <laughs> what so my fiance always says. We're going to cross the bridge when we get to it. And what would I do if it happened again? To be honest, I'd consider that too. Um, I don't know what I would do. 
I would do everything on my power to make sure that I'm, you know, as okay as I can be. But knowing how my body, what my body went through and how white it was before and then after the surgery. And then, you know, I'm still, I still have fatigue and stuff. I don't know that my body could handle it again, which is another reason why I said that I probably would get my metal taken out. I don't know if my body can handle it again. I almost, they almost lost me twice the first surgery. I don't know if I, I don't know if it can handle that again. I don't know. I have a very strong body for a body that went through as much as it did. You know, but will it be okay the next time? I don't know. So, all I know is I would do the best I can to do the best I can for myself if that ever happened. Um, and if we catch it early, maybe there's even more we can do. So, yeah. all right, next question which is actually the last question. Do you regret the surgery? Or are you glad you did it? I would say I regret nothing. You know, had I not done it, I wouldn't be here talking to you guys right now. So, uh, I don't regret anything. Regardless of, you know, my arthritis issue getting worse because of the surgery or having eggs on my eye back again or, you know, not being able to bend or move around like you know everybody else can, having to do so many things differently, which is always a struggle and always frustrating, or always just at times depressing. Um, especially when like you do your best, but it never feels like good enough for other people. Because I don't, not everybody, not everybody understands the struggle, and I don't expect them to. But I don't expect you to hold my struggle against me because if, it, if I had it my way, I probably wouldn't have chosen it. So, that's what I'm going to say about that. But, I regret nothing. So, I want to end this video before I close out like I usually do. You know, my typical ART stuff. You know, I want to say I thank you guys so much for always watching my videos and supporting me. Those of you guys that do. Um... I want to say I'm grateful to be here another year. Grateful that I've reached year four. Are you kidding me? Like four years? It's really been that long? Oh my god. It's been four years since my spine surgery. Almost. We have three days. Today is Tuesday the 20... Not Tuesday. Today is Wednesday the 23rd. <laughs> um, well, I'm filming this. Um, I was actually supposed to film this. I actually got to film this two days ago, but didn't feel up to it. Like I was sick on Monday. Well, not, well, not sick, but feeling sick because of my back and stuff on Monday and yesterday I fell on some other stuff. Um, I was supposed to do editing but I ended up pushing back my filming day so I'm going to edit today. Um, I wanted to film this today so these are actually the two of these, there's three videos coming out this week. Two of them might actually come out, no one of, one of them, I think this one will come out today so um, but it'll come, it might come out later. I have some stuff I gotta go do outside of the house, so. It might come out later. Also, if you're wondering what this brown thing is up here, this is just little hops from, uh, my eye my surgery. My mom gave me this. So, I love my hops. She's up here chilling, you know. Just in case you guys are wondering what the heck that was up there this whole time. That's just hops up there chilling, you know, having fun. My rest of the families are over here buying me, like, Wolfie, right here. So, yeah. But, um... Yeah. Uh, thank you guys for watching my videos. Um, I always appreciate what you do. Um, and I hope this video helps you guys and is informative. Now, I can go into more detail later on. I just wanted to make sure about some of these things. But I just wanted to make sure that I answered the most asked questions that I get um, for those of you guys that, you know, want answers. I know a lot of you guys are, you know, even still to this day, going to have the surgery or have to get it one day or know somebody that's having it and, you know, they have questions for you that you can't answer because, you know, I had I know somebody that went through that with their friend. Their friend was going to have, you know, surgery and they are just like, I don't know what to do. Like, they're asking those questions and... Me knowing what I know, I give them answers. So, this is me, you know, helping you guys. 
So let me know if this helped you at all, and let me know if this answers some of your questions, or even answer, even like gives you a sense of relief about some of the stuff that um, you might be experiencing after surgery, even if it's only a couple years or a year later. Um, because it comforted me when I watched other people's videos on like post-surgery life, like maybe a year or two later, and you know they were like, "Well, I have this issue now, or this issue got worse for me." I'm just like, "Oh, so it wasn't just me." It's pretty cool. So let me know if that helps you guys too. Um, so my main thing was always to talk about the stuff that's usually pretty uncomfortable for me to help you guys because you know. It's always nice to feel like there's somebody that gets it. And even I like to feel that. So if I could make you guys feel like, she, oh, she gets it. You know, she she understands. I'm happy to do it. Now, I'm here now. Um, Want to say goodbye to the people, Hops? Yeah? All right. So bye, guys. And, uh. Peace out.